Okay, this is a little video about the Big Ugly tool. This is a traditional tool in Oregon for the Myrtlewood turners on the coast. It's been around so long that nobody knows who came up with it first. The idea is you take some bar stock or mild steel, you silver solder a piece of tan tongue or another metal as stellite onto it. It holds an edge almost as well as carbide and it's very easy to sharpen on your traditional grinding wheels. Part of it is the silver soldering. You need torch skills and you need acetylene torch to get it up hot enough. I have no skills that way, but my friend Randall Dale here does. Um, Randall is a member of our local Turners Club, the Beaver State Wood Turners. So we're gonna walk you through this process, but we're gonna do that assuming that you know how to safely use uh, any kind of heating equipment that you're gonna use here. We're using an acetylene torch and I'm gonna be using a cutting torch because I don't have a rosebud. A rosebud would be a lot better to be used here. Uh, but if you don't know how to use uh, an acetylene torch safely, don't attempt this at home. Okay, so we're going to be putting together three dissimilar metals. We're going to be putting in uh, uh, soft cold rolled steel. We're going to be putting together silver solder. And this is silver solder tape that you can purchase at uh, most any of your local welding shops. This may be a special order. Uh, it comes in about a three foot roll. And we're going to be putting in this tang tongue piece. Everything needs to be good and clean and you must use some kind of flux. So this is just some real old silver solder flux that my grandfather had. And so we're just gonna make sure that we have flux on here. Put our silver solder tape down. Put some more flux on top of the tape. And then put our other piece on top. You also notice that we have this held in a uh, metal vise on top of a metal table and there's nothing around here that's flammable. So now we're going to fire up our torch and start to heat this up. So as I heat this up, you're going to notice that I keep the torch moving and I'll be heating up both the top and the bottom. And we're gonna do this until the whole thing gets cherry red and everything melts well together. And for those of us that don't know, what is a rosebud tip? Uh, it is uh, actually a heating tip that you put on your torch to heat things up. This here is actually for cutting metal. So it kind of spreads the flame out yes. wider than rather than a fine point for cutting. Right. Okay. Does a really good job heating. Now if you'll notice, I hope you can see it in the video, you can see how the bottom here is starting to turn red. I'll pull this aside and see if that shows up. And the top is also starting to heat up. And as you do that, you see I left a little bit of silver solder coming out this back side. And you can see how, as it's getting hot, it's getting ready to melt. It's not melted yet. If we were to stop right now, this would not stick together. It's also a good time to take and check and make sure everything's all good and square right where you want it because pretty soon you won't be able to adjust it anymore. Okay, now as you can see that everything's all nice and cherry red and you can see the solder out the back. 
See how it oozes just a little bit? So you know that that's melted. And, you, and I was able to move that piece of tang tongue around really easily, like it's rolling on ball bearings. So at this point, you just let it cool down. Don't quench it in water. Just let it cool down on its own, and then you'll be ready to go to the next step. For making the big ugly, or actually you can call this a little ugly tool, pick these up at the local Harbor Freight. They're about four bucks a piece. It's a pry bar. Cut the end off use an abrasive blade and the circular saw, and then take this to a belt sander and clean all the paint off it. And this was something that my friend Randall came up with. He's the one that discovered this. So we're going to modify a Harbor Freight pry bar. So we're going to cut the end off. You're going to take all the paint off of it, make sure it's nice and clean. And then it's the same process as what we did before. I already put some silver solder flux on here. Here's a piece of the silver solder tape. Some more silver solder flux. And if you notice, this is set up quite a bit different than what we did before because the vise is so large that we wouldn't be able to heat up the end of it. So we put this on a pair of vice grips and the vice grips also acts as a heat sink to try to keep this plastic handle from heating up and melting on us. So here we go. We're all set up again. We also have just a little bit of silver solder tape sticking out the back. Trying to line it up the best we can knowing it will probably move around. Our last chance to get it set right where we want it. You see the silver solder on the back is now melted. Everything's all cherry red. And now you let it cool down. That's so cool. <laughs> I've never thought of uh, the handles melting, but I guess that heat will get back that far. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not, not too bad there, but if, if you grab the vice grips, they're, they're warm right there. Oh, yeah. See, not, not too bad here, but it's going to be hot there, really hot. Oh, yeah. I know that. <laughs> so. Okay, this is more of a traditional type big ugly tool. This is on three quarter inch square stock. Uh, my friend Larry Carlin, who does one of the sharpening videos I have, uh, made this for me and if you look you can notice that he made the sandwich type handle for this scraper too so standard stock for the tan tongue or the stellite about one eighth of an inch thick and the problem with these square shaft tools like this is they are a little bit top heavy so they're fine if you're using them flat on a tool rest like this if you roll them up on the edge if you're working on the very bottom corner here, that kind of works. If you start getting up near the middle, you can be a little bit overbalanced and get a nice big catch with it. So these generally are better flat on the tool rest. So on my mini Big Ugly like this, this is a square shafted tool again. As is, it works fine flat on the tool rest. And kind of like the bigger one, if you start rolling it over on its edge, it gets a little bit off balanced. Next time I make one of these for myself, I will actually cut this down a little bit. 
about an eighth of an inch or so and then put the tan tongue in there uh, that just makes it a little bit better I like shear scraping everything so if I turn it over on its edge it's going to be a little bit more well balanced so these are big ugly tools I've made with a one inch wide bar stock it's kind of hard to fit a piece like this into a handle and have you know room for wood on the outside so I cut them down like this uh, using my jigsaw and a metal cutting blade. It's a painfully slow process, but it does give a better seat into the handle and you don't have to have a great big huge wide handle. This particular one, after I've cut it down, I actually put this one on with some JB Weld. Um, this is an experiment in progress. I don't know how well that will hold. I don't think there will be any problems until I start getting down very close to the end. I did use the JB Weld to try to put a tan tongue tip on one of my McNaughton coring blades. It did not work at all. I would think on this it would be fine, but again, that is an experiment in progress. So this is my three quarter inch wide, uh, big ugly. Um, this one is pretty easy to get wood all the way around it when you make a handle, and I generally don't worry about cutting these down. Um, and for scraper purposes, I don't think you need anything wider than one inch. I can stall any lathe I've ever turned on with a one inch wide scraper. Um, anything bigger than that is just kind of overkill. So this is a 3 8 inch wide piece of tan tongue that I silver soldered, or Randall silver soldered for me, onto one of my McNaughton coring blades. Uh, this is another experiment in progress, but I love the way this cuts. And if you try the JB weld on this, it will not hold. 